rising expectation, a new day of hope. I lift my eyes to you. I lift my eyes to you. Where does my help come from? My hope is in you, God. We haven't seen. We haven't seen anything yet. You make good on your promises. Your kingdom will know no end. It just gets better. It just gets better with you, God. with me. I lift my eyes to you. Where does my help come from? I lift my eyes to you. Where does my help come from? My hope is in you, God. We haven't seen anything yet. You make good on your promises. Your kingdom will know no way. It just is just gets better with you, God. We haven't seen anything yet. You make good on your promises. Your kingdom will know no way. It just gets better. It just gets better with you, God. We just prophesy, we just say it's going to get better. Your kingdom is advancing. Nothing can stop the spread of an unstoppable kingdom. You take the valley of weeping and you turn it into joy because that's who you are. Seasons of disappointment Become a dance floor, cause that's who you are. You take the valley of weeping, you turn it into joy, cause that's who you are. Seasons of disappointment, become a dance floor, cause that's who you are. We haven't seen anything. You make good on your promises. Your kingdom will know no end. It just gets better. It just gets better with you, God. We haven't seen anything yet. You make good on your promises. Your kingdom will know no end. It just gets better. It just gets better with Come on, sing it with me We haven't seen We haven't seen anything yet You make good on your promises Your kingdom will know no end It just gets better It just gets
stand up with me. We're going to enter into worship. I know the rain's probably holding some people up, but we're in here and we're just going to press right in. So Jesus, we thank you for your presence that is always with us. God, we just say, come and have your way. We just offer our worship before you, Father God. We just lay down everything before you and we just say, come and have your way in this place tonight. We love you with all that we are and with our whole hearts and we just magnify your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies Oh, raise a hallelujah Louder than the unbelief Oh, raise a hallelujah
Like, I just keep feeling it in my spirit, so. Jesus, we just surrender to this moment. We love you, Abba. The Lord is holy. The Lord is powerful. The Lord is awesome in all of his ways. The Lord is gracious and good and kind. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. The Lord is the God of the impossible. The Lord is able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything you could ever ask or think. See, we're singing to the Lord about the Lord and we're reminding ourselves of who he is. Let's remind ourselves tonight because the enemy of your soul is doing everything he can to, to, to quench who God is to you in your life. I know that some of you are are facing challenges in your life. You're going through some big stuff, stuff that seems like it's uh, more than you can bear. I want to remind you that greater is he that's in you than anything around you. 
I want to remind you that there is nothing that you cannot overcome because whoever believes, all things are possible to whoever believes. And it doesn't matter what the doctors say. It doesn't matter what the banker says. It doesn't matter what your spouse says. It doesn't matter what the world around you says. The only thing that matters is what God says. And so tonight as we, uh, as we close our worship session out, I want us to pray tonight, particularly for the impossible things right now that are going on in your life. Some of us know people that are in the hospital right now. They're, they're battling COVID or some other thing. Uh, one of my uh, dear friend of ours from back at Countryside Christian Center uh, got struck by lightning. Literally, it lifted him up off the ground, two feet, fire underneath him. He survived it. He survived it. He's going to have heart surgery tomorrow, uh, or Sunday, Monday, excuse me. He's going to have heart surgery on Monday. But I'm believing that God is going to restore whatever that lightning bolt did, that God's going to restore and strengthen him. Uh, we've been praying for uh, Jerry Mallon. We're believing God for total restoration and healing in him, that uh, this COVID and everything related to it is going to leave his body in Jesus' name. Uh, there are other people, some of you, you, you know somebody or something where you need God to break through in your life. Is there anyone in here, you personally, you need God to give you a breakthrough somewhere in your life? There's Whether it's physical or emotional or spiritual or financial or relational, is, is there anybody in here who needs God to do something big in your life? There's a few of you. The rest of you are doing great. Come lay hands on me rub off some of what you got on me tonight. I'm glad things are going well for you tonight, and if they are, praise God. But let's add our faith to those who need a touch from the Lord tonight. Let's believe God that he's going to turn things around, that God is going to restore, God is going to heal, God is going to deliver, God's going to provide, God's going to reconcile. Don't, don't, lose, don't lose faith, don't lose hope doesn't matter what the situation says. As long as you've got breath in your body, there is hope. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I, you know, the preacher said I'd, I'd rather be a live dog than a dead lion because as long as there's breath, there's hope. That circumstance in you can change. And if you don't lose sight of the God of the impossible, you're going to get yours. You say, well, pastor, you know, I've been praying for some people and they died. Yeah, I know. They got graduated and promoted. Jesus called them home. They're doing great right now. Listen, believe God, believe God, believe God. Lord, Lord, we, we just, just lift a hand up before the Lord. Whether, you, whether everything's good or bad or indifferent, just lift a hand up. I believe God just wants to impart something to you right now. Father, our hands are lifted up to the God of all possibilities. Our hands are lifted up to the one who can change things, Lord, in a moment. You can suddenly rush in to that situation and turn it around, Lord God. And so I pray, Lord, that your anointing would come upon your people even now. And that, Lord, healing and deliverance and provision and reconciliation and restoration would come and would fall upon your people and the circumstances in their lives right now. Lord, I pray, oh God, that you would pour your spirit out in abundance tonight, Lord God. That you would do something tonight, Lord God. Oh, Father, I thank you tonight. I thank you for the rain but enough is enough. Uh, Lord, our parking lot's a mess, but I, I was reminded tonight, Lord God, that you parted the Red Sea and the Israelites walked through on dry ground. And so I'm praying tonight for a miracle, Lord, that you would dry up our parking lot and that tomorrow when people come here, they're gonna park on dry ground. Oh Lord, you say, I know people think that's crazy, but Lord, I believe you're able, Lord. Lord, you care about the little things and the big things and everything in between. So, Father, tonight we thank you. We thank you for your grace and your mercy and for your help and your healing. And we thank you tonight, Lord God, for doing what only you can do. Only you can do it, Jesus. And that's what we love to see. We love to see, Lord God, when we're in a situation where only you can do it, God. 
And we thank you in advance for what you're about to do. Lord, just bless your people tonight. Let our hearts be open to everything that you had for us. And glorify your name, Lord God, in us and in this house always. In Jesus' name. And God's people say, come on, you give him a great big praise tonight, would you? Give him a great big praise tonight. Oh, don't hold back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah to the King. Hallelujah to the King. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. The devil's a liar. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, come on, take a moment. Would you turn to two or three people? Uh, Give them a greeting of whatever kind is good. Blow them a kiss or give them an embrace in the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Bless the Lord. Well, I want to welcome you to New Hope Church tonight. You are the brave. You are the brave. You are, you, you are the ones that can push through the storms of life. Uh, how many of you uh, drove through the thunder and the rain to get to church tonight? Were there a few of you? Yeah, it, it got a little dicey out there for a little bit, at least where I was at. Uh, but uh, you're here tonight, and I want to thank you. Thank you for being with us. Is there anybody you're visiting for the first time at New Hope Church? Lift a, lift a hand right over here. God bless you, brother. Welcome. Welcome over here and over here. Did you get a little uh, welcome card and a little brochure about the church when you came in? Did anybody give you that? No? Here, our ushers got that for you. Uh, it's, um, it's a little uh, packet that will tell you a little bit about uh, the church. Inside there's a, a card, a connect card. And if you wouldn't mind, take a minute fill that out. And uh, you can either leave it on your chair or put it in the, the box in the back or give it to one of the ushers. That'll help us get to know you and give me an opportunity to uh, reach out to you this week. I'll just give you a phone call. Thank you for your visit and see if you have any prayer need. Anyway, we can stand with you in prayer. Uh, any ladies here that uh, went to the conference uh, this weekend? Oh, uh, there are a few of you here. Yeah. I heard good things. Was, was, was it good? Were you blessed? Yeah, I know you were blessed. Uh, the, the anointing of the Lord was on this property. I'm telling you what, you could feel the Lord's presence. I loved all the pink shirt ladies. That was great. How many of you were on the pink shirt team? Were any of you on the pink shirt team? Yeah, a couple of you. Yeah, that was really cool. Pastor Karen, you and your team did an amazing job. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, we're so delighted uh, for all that the Lord is doing and thankful uh, for uh, your being a part Uh, Well, I know we probably got some announcements. Yeah, then we got a video. Go ahead, run that, Hayden. All right, everybody, welcome back to New Hope Church. We're so glad to have you here with us today. We do want to jump into the board in just a minute here, but um, give me um, just a little bit of your time so I can walk you through the announcements for the week. So as always, we have our midweek Bible study with Pastor Tom Wednesday night, 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary, and at the same time, our youth group meets in the Forge building. Now, youth group has a very fun event planned for the 3rd of September, which is a Friday, and that is our third annual Mr. Miyagi Memorial Ninja Tournament. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Don't miss out on that. Um, And as always, we have our in-person prayer Thursday night, 7 p.m. in the Forge building. And while our Facebook prayer calls during the week are on hold, please take this opportunity to check out our various small groups on other opportunities to fellowship, get prayer, and pray for others during the week here at New Hope. Um, Other than that, let me just thank you as always for your faithful giving. Um, The Lord has really blessed it. We've seen so many cool things happen, um, even just this year at our church, um, including um, the Women's 
events event that's happened this weekend um, but yeah there's more to come so we're always grateful for you supporting us in that um, and uh, we do pray that you're going to rejoice in the fruit of that with us as always you can do that online via mail using the donation boxes at the sanctuary doors or you can use our qr code to make your transaction thank you so much god bless you have a wonderful rest of your weekend um, but now let's dive into the word together Amen. Sure, appreciate Feli and, and her ministry to us. I don't want to take uh, any more time up. I want us to get right into the Word. Uh, we are honored to have special guests with us this weekend. Uh, Archbishop Willie Bolden is with us tonight with his beautiful wife, <laughs> Pastor Dr. Rhonda Bolden. Uh, we, many of you, uh, entered into prayer with us as a church family as we prayed for Bishop uh, when he went through COVID. He was in the hospital for 60 some days. Yes, five months uh, on a ventilator when they say uh, 10 to 20% of people who go on a ventilator uh, survive, most people die. Uh, but uh, he's a little too ornery for heaven, so God kept him down here to cook with us. Uh, actually, I believe God kept him down here because there is more that the Lord wants to do in and through Bishop's life. And, and so we're grateful that he's here tonight. And he's an amazing preacher, but he's not preaching tonight. Um, his number two, his number one is preaching tonight, and it's his favorite preacher, and that's his wife, uh, Dr. Rhonda Bolden. Uh, I, I have an opportunity every once in a while, I would go online and I would listen uh, to services that they had up in Fort Wayne in their church. And, um, and when she would be up there leading, I mean, the Spirit of the Lord would come because she's, first of all, filled with the Spirit, filled with the Word of God, and she can flat out preach. And so when Pastor Karen uh, said she was going to invite uh, Dr. Bolden to come and to share in her conference, she said, do you think we could hold her over for the weekend? I said, do I think? <laughs> I said, yeah, I know. We're going to definitely do that. And so I'm so delighted that uh, we'll have the opportunity to hear her ministry as a church family. Would you please help me to welcome uh, Pastor Dr. Rhonda Bolden as she comes to share the word of the Lord. against your home close your eyes and let these words marinate we came up against your children mm. the enemy came up against your name the enemy came up against your name the enemy came up against your character came against your character you win. but you win keep your eyes closed and listen you win you Against your health, came up against your health. The enemy came up against your finances, came up against your finances. The enemy came up against your vision. All oh, the vision God gave you, the enemy came up the against didn't your like business. Your business, you but you win. win. Oh, yes, God. Yes, you win. You're hurt and you're torn. You're broken, but you will win. I am a bold shot. The truth still remains that in the name of Jesus, you win. Ha! No matter what the devil does, we always win. You can open your eyes and tell your neighbor, this is my winning season. Look at them and tell them. Come on, tell them this is my winning season. No matter what the devil throws. 
everybody that's connected to you win. Oh, yes. Everything attached to you win. Because God wins, you win, and everybody connected to you win. Come on, put your hands together for God tonight. Hallelujah. Come on, say it with me. I can never lose. Come on, say it. I'll never run out. And God will never let me go under. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah, Jesus. Glory be to God. You may fade it out. Oh, I get to playing that song at home, and let me tell you, the devil just has to pick another house because I win. I just give God praise for you tonight uh, to uh, Pastor Nick and uh, our sister. I think she'll be here tomorrow, uh, Sister Ellie, and also um, Pastor Karen, who invited me, and, and for everyone that's here. But most of all, I give God praise for my baby. Archbishop Willie Bolden. Come on, give God a hand for him. We were talking about the Dream Women's Conference, and he is a dream mate that I prayed for. I prayed for a husband over 15 years, and the Lord blessed me. I was divorced. I married as a virgin at 27, and my husband was married to another woman while we were married and had a baby with her. And it almost, it just almost, I, I can't even describe how I felt. I was so embarrassed. There was over a thousand people at our wedding. And my dad was one of the most uh, well-known pastors in Fort Wayne, Indiana. When my dad passed, uh, he had, and I'm looking at my clock here, seven o'clock, 6.59. Uh, when he passed, um, he had about a four to 5,000 pe uh, uh, people funeral, two-day funeral. And um, the first night, Jesse Jackson did the eulogy. They were very good friends. My dad was in civil rights for many years. Uh, we had threats on our life all the time when I was growing up, but he was very well known in my hometown, and God delivered Fort Wayne from um, the, the snares of, of um, discrimination, and it began to develop. So he had been there since the 50s, so when everyone heard that Bishop Jesse White passed, I mean, they were coming from all states and cities. And so when we got married, a lot of people there. Very embarrassing, and, uh, and then... You know, after I got through that, I was at a T.D. Jakes Bible conference and uh, met a gentleman, a past, I mean, a uh, minister, not a pastor, there. And so we started seeing, and he proposed, and we got married. And I don't know, I said, God, I done missed it again. And uh, we moved to Atlanta, and he started trying to abuse me. I didn't know where the anger was coming from. And I'm sharing this with you because no matter of the divine detours, Look at your neighbor and say, you still win. It doesn't matter what happens. Even when you try to do things the right way. I tried to marry as a virgin. I wanted my kids from one man, like my mom. And I just couldn't believe I was going through this. So got married to the minister. We moved to Atlanta. Started seeing mood swings and changes and anger and meanness and snappiness and other things. And I said, wow, where is this coming from? And so long story short, I talked to his sister and said, why is your brother so angry? I, I'm not doing anything to make him upset. I mean, we're discussing things. She said, oh, he never forgave our mom who walked off and left five of us in a house and never came back. She abandoned us. And he's, she, he's been angry with her since, and she's dead now. And we had to bury her. We we've c c uh, connected with her later, but we had to be the ones to bury her. And he's just very, still very angry, and it's been years ago. And I said, wow. So unforgiveness caused him to, I, I found out I was his fifth wife. So here I am under 40, divorced twice. I said, how the heck did this happen? <laughs> But I was divorced in 99. I kept praying, you guys. I kept fasting. I kept believing God. You cannot see a dream manifest unless you believe God. Because God, the, the devil will bring things to distract you from what God showed you and told you. He will. What God showed you and told you he will put things in your face to make you think, oh, that'll never happen. I'll never be happily married. 
but the devil is a liar. And I say today, my husband and I, we have seven years in January. Come on, give God a hand. <laughs> and then we, uh, then life happens. And last year we both contracted the virus. In October, uh, we were at an event and Bishop uh, he tells everyone, keep your mask on. That's why I came up here with it. He took it off and got it at a conference uh, in October. Uh, someone, he said he remembered, got close to him, and he could feel the saliva, the mist, and that's when he got it. And a few days after, about probably five to seven days or so, he started feeling tired and sweating, and the temperature was 102.3. Took him to the hospital. He tested positive. I got it from him because we're always kissing. So before he knew he had it, I got it from him, but we didn't know he had it till later. So I got it. I was fighting uh, stage three breast cancer. I had a mastectomy. Um, I had six rounds of chemo and 30 rounds of radiation. Second degree burns where all my skin peeled off on the left side here under my arm and where I had um, the, the surgery. And I went through all of that praying him out of the hospital. Um, and you, you, if you saw pictures and videos of how he went through, you wouldn't even believe it. But God, look at your neighbor and say, but God. And he was on a ventilator 35 days, had a stroke from the virus, played golf two or three times a week. And to see my husband go through this has just been, I told Pastor Karen, girl, tears would lap while, I was taking, while I'm taking care of him at home. But he's gotten so much better since March when he came home. And he's walking now. You want to show him you're walking? Come on, show him. I want you to show him. Because you all, he could not walk when he came home. Ha, me kodolobo sanda. The power of prayer. Hey, thank you, Jesus. The devil doesn't want you happy. And after I prayed all those years, then this happens. But he's coming out of this. So tonight and tomorrow morning, I'm going to do what Daddy God told me. And he said to encourage you tonight to let you know that you always win no matter what. Put that on your paper if you have notes. If you can grab some paper, I'm going to give you some scriptures. Because I can guarantee you, no matter how you plan things, and no matter what you do, you can tithe, you can treat people right, you can give money to people. Because I, I know I was born to be a philanthropist and a billionaire philanthropist, and it's going to happen. But I give at the level I'm at. I love giving people their money. It's a gift that God gave me, one of the spiritual gifts in the Bible, gift of helps. You know, and then I like to not only help them meet the immediate need, but to help them build a lifetime supply. You know, see, if you look and get your paper, everyone. I know you probably didn't prepare. Grab something in your, in your purse and really, or phone and text this and really take notes. In 2 Kings chapter 4, it talks about the poor widow that her husband left her with no money, left her uncovered, and she had nothing, and he died. And this creditor, one creditor, was coming to threaten to take her two sons to pay that bill. And her husband left her with nothing. And he was a prophet. So she goes to Elisha in 2 Kings 4 and says, my husband worked for you and God, but this creditor has come to take my sons as slaves. And the prophet said, how may I help you? What do you have in your house? And I said when I read that, now this is just a shame. This preacher here, you know, they 
get money and all that when they need it. And this woman, a widow, the Bible said, help the widows and the orphans. You know, this was that carnal mind when I read that. Some people in here may have said the same thing. I said, he should have helped that woman. Why he didn't give her the money for that bill, to pay that bill? God said to me, revelation for elevation. I call it a light bulb experience. He said, that man of God did what I said. He gave her spiritual instruction in our world, in the natural world, in a physical world, but gave her spiritual instruction to not only meet her immediate need, but to help her have a lifetime supply. Now, he said, have she, had he came out and said, well, oh, you need help, okay, we'll pay that bill, she would have been back next month for help. And maybe the next. And so God said to me, but listen to what he said to her. He said, what do you have in your house? Use what you have. You play music. You draw. You write poetry. You're good at speaking. I love to speak. I love to train. I love to coach women. I did it 25 years from home. I don't do it anymore. But uh, whatever it is that you do. So in today's world, God wants you to think about what is it that you're good at? What has God gifted you with that the world needs? So she said, I have nothing at all. And then she thought about it, but a flask of olive oil. He said, bring it here. And a flask is about that big. So she brings it and he tells her, you and your sons go and gather many empty vessels and do not gather just a few. I said, now why did he tell her to go gather empty vessels if she needs some money? He taking her through this wild goose chase. And God said, keep reading, Rhonda. I'm getting ready to show you something. So they go. Now listen, the, the message in this part here is that the, bo the, the boys, her kids, go with her. Instead of staying at home, playing outside, they were helping her to pay that rent, to pay that bill, to learn how to be in industrial and to be business-minded and to, and to do something. So they go and gather the vessels. The Bible never reveals how many, 10, 20, 100. We don't know. But they come back and she said, and, and look at the obedience that she had. She comes back and says, I did what you said. We have the vessels. He said, now you and your sons go in the house and shut the door. And some of us have to do that with what God is going to speak to you today briefly. You have to learn to shut the door because in the silence are your solutions. Put that down on your paper. Your solutions that you're asking God for are in the silence. I don't know why he made her go in the house so other people couldn't see the glory of God of what was about to happen. But I believe that it was because God was doing something with her and her sons personally and when they went in and shut the door she asked her sons to hand her a vessel hand her over a vessel and she took the flask poured it in the empty vessel and the bible says every container or vessel was filled to the brim and she said hand me another so she kept doing that until it said it would, that one would fill that one. And it never revealed how many and how many times the, she t said that to her sons. But it says every time that she got another one, it filled up. And listen, until they had no more empty vessels or, va or vases. And it said, and they said, Mom, uh, uh, there are, Mother, there are no more vessels. And she said, okay. And the Bible says the oil stopped. What is the message there? Because... Those vessels in today's world represent the people who need you. They need your gifts. The gifts you have is the anointing of God in your life. You're good at something. Someone needs you because if they didn't need you, guess what? You would have checked out. And the, to, to know for sure that you're needed, you woke up this morning. Whenever you wake up, God is not through with you. Come on, give God a hand for that. Come on, give him a hand.
When you wake up, you go, "Uh uh-oh, he has something for me to do today. Because if you were done and no one needed you, you didn't have any more assignment to your life that God put in your fingerprint that you're supposed to do that no one else can do because no one else has your fingerprint out of all the millions of people who were born and died before you, the Indians, the Bible people, the slaves, millions of people that were born and died before you. And out of all the over 8 billion people on the planet right now, And out of all the millions that will be born after you die, no one will ever duplicate your fingerprint. So if you wake up, brother and sister, God's not through with you. Somebody needs you. So she, you know, fills these these vessels with the physical oil. But in today's uh, time, you can look at that as your inner oil. You have an inner oil well. And an inner water well God put in you. John 3, put it down, you can read it later. It's either John 3 or John 4. Maybe John 4, is that the well, woman at the well? John 4, John 4. The Bible says that Jesus told the woman, I will put an inner perpetual spring of life in you that will never run out. Look up the word perpetual, it means continuously. So you have an inner oil and an inner water well. Someone needs to to, uh, receive something and to to drink and to pull from your well. So that woman did what the prophet said. Then she goes to him and says, okay, we filled all of the the, uh, vessels. Now what do you want us to do? He says, now go sell your oil, pay your debt, and you and your sons live on the rest. Now, that was building a lifetime supply because they had so much oil that I'm sure not only that one bill was paid, but many things. So in, in you doing what God wants you to do in this life and in you experiencing the things that you have experienced through the pandemic, through um, um, uh, the trials, through sickness, through what my husband and I went through, through the storms of life, I can tell you this, God intends to use your tests as a testimony. I want you to write this word down, testimonies, plural, testimonies. Write that down, testimonies, plural. Now, what's the word at the end of that word? Monies. Your monies is in your testimonies. Somebody say light bulb. (laughs) Your money that you need, some of you experiencing uh, a a temporary uh, drought in your life. And you're wondering, what are we going to do financially? My job ran out with the pandemic. The church closed up, or or many people in ministry, or I had to uh, uh, sell my car. We have to move. We can't pay this house note anymore. What are we going to do? The things that you have been through in your life that made you think that you were losing, God is going to turn it around, and he's going to use it for his glory, and that wilderness is going to be your wealth. In our lives, when we go through a process, we have to learn, and I had to learn this, don't fight your process, write your process. The books that you buy, those people made it through the seven times hotter fiery furnace of life, and they have been inducted into the hall of fame of seven times hotter fiery furnace inductees. Are you one? Have you made it through a seven times times hotter fiery furnace of life? Where the Hebrew boys, they, listen, a scared king had the strongest soldiers, King Nebuchadnezzar, to bind them up and put them in the fire furnace. And the people who put them in burned up and died. But the Bible says they walked in. Now, the men who put them in, they're consumed by the fire when they open the door. 
But here the Hebrew boys go right into it. And they're bundled up together, tied up. Read it in Daniel. And the Bible says they, they uh, came together and they all fell to the ground. And, of course, the fire broke the ropes. And they started walking around. And then the Holy Ghost said, I've been waiting on you fellas. And in your life, you've been experiencing some things. And you wondered if God was with you. And he wants you to know today that he was with you all the time. No matter what you experienced, no matter what happened, no matter what you thought you lost, you always win. Amen. And so I'm talking about, you could put as a title, we always win no matter what. We always win no matter what. In Genesis 1, verses 27 through 29, which I didn't give to our our um, uh, gentlemen in the media, we're going to go to the one scripture that I did give them. But Genesis 1 talks about that God blessed them. He created man and blessed them. When you are blessed by God, you win. I don't care what happens, you win. When God blesses you, you cannot lose. You cannot go under. You will not be put to shame. So he created them and he blessed them. You're blessed. Deuteronomy 28, I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in my going. I'm blessed in my coming. I'm blessed. I want you to say that with me. I'm blessed. No matter how the enemy makes you think, you will never make it. But in Genesis 1, 27 through 29, it says, And God created man and woman in his image after his likeness, and then he blessed them. Colossians 2, verses 14 through 15, that's the first scripture. In the New Living Translation, it says, he canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross of Christ. Raise your hand and say, I win, devil. I win, devil. Now, when you disarm somebody, they have no weapons. And this happened on the cross. You weren't even born. Your parents were not even here. <laughs> so you won before you got here. And then when you accepted Jesus as your Savior, you got the divine hookup. <laughs> so no matter what happens, lose your house, lose your car, lose your job, business is not doing well, your husband is acting up, your wife's acting crazy, the kid's doing crazy things, they're going to prison, they're on drugs, whatever. I want you to say it with me loud. I win. And then when you look at Romans 8, 37 in the New Living Translation, it says, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And for the sake of time, you read all of chapter 8, Bishop's, one of his favorite chapters. Death can't, the angels can't. Our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow. If you're cold, don't have food, will anything separate you from the love of God? And then verse 37 in the Living Bible, New Living Translation says, no. Everybody say, no, I'll never go under. I'll never go under. You always win no matter what. And in Romans 12, excuse me, not Romans, Revelations 12, my testimony. Hallelujah. Revelations 12 is such a powerful scripture. You will be attacked no matter what. You have the victory, but the attack is still coming. But no matter what happens, you win. It says here, I witness in heaven 
and in a, an event of great significance, I saw a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon beneath her feet, and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant, and she cried out because of her labor pains and agony of giving birth. Then I witnessed in heaven another significant event. I saw a large red dragon with seven heads and seven and ten horns, with seven crowns on his head. His tail swept away one-third of the stars in the sky, and he threw them to the earth. He stood in front of the woman as she was about to give birth, ready to devour her baby, your vision, your dreams. Me wanting to be married to one man and have children. Guess what? The what I went through, I never even got to have children. But tell your neighbor, I, she still won. I always wanted a boy and girl since I was 18. But you don't let what happened sway you. It just wasn't the will of God. You have to be mature to know God knows what's best for you. And so then it says, this is my testimony. She, and you can have a spiritual baby. You can have a vision, a business idea. So it's not just a physical baby. It says, as it says, waiting to devour her baby as soon as it was to be born, she gave birth. Now the devil's standing there ready. Come on, send that baby out. I'm going to eat him up. No, you're not. You may be an antagonizer, perpetrator, an instigator, and you may try to scare the people of God, but we always win. Come on, say hallelujah. So look at this said he stood in front of the woman as she was about to give birth T to devour ready to devour her baby as soon as it was to be born she gave birth to a son who was to rule all of the nations with an iron rod and her child was snatched away from the dragon and was caught up to God and to his throne and the woman fled into the wilderness where God had prepared a place for her for to care for her for 1260 days that's like over three years then there was war in heaven Michael and his angels fought the dragon and his angels let's go to the next part and the dragon lost the battle. Come on, say hallelujah. <laughs> the dragon lost the battle. I don't care what. He could stand there. I'm going to kill you, baby. You're not going to win. Your business is not going to win. You, you, your marriage is not going to work. And you tell that brother, you said, listen, you don't know who you're talking to. I never lose. I'll never run out. And God will never let me go under. And it says here. The dragon lost the battle, and, and, uh, and he and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole earth, was thrown down to the earth with all his angels. Then I heard a loud voice shouting across the heavens, and it has come at last, salvation and power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ for the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to the earth. And the one who accused the one who accuses them before our God day and night. And they have defeated him. Look at God. By the blood of the lamb and, their, and by their testimony. And guess what? Testimonies. Because you're going to have more than one if you live long enough. <laughs> and it says, and they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who live in the heavens rejoice. But terror will come on the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you in great anger, knowing that he has little time. When the dragon realized that he had been thrown down to the earth, look what happened. He still wasn't done attacking the woman. There were four attacks in this chapter. He pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child, but she was given two wings like those of a great eagle so she could fly to a place prepared for her in the wilderness. There she would be cared for and protected from the dragon for a time, times, and half a time. Then the dragon tried to drown the woman. He's still not done. This is the third attack. Look what happened. 
with a flood of water that flowed from his mouth. Those are the people who talked about you. Oh, isn't that a shame? Look at it. They lost everything. Oh, did you hear she went through her third divorce? Oh, you know her kids is in prison. Did you know that her youngest son got on drugs? They keep talking, and that's the flood of water from the mouth of the dragon. But it doesn't matter. I want you to say, it don't matter. I still win. Say that with me. It doesn't matter. I still win. And so it says that he, the, then the dragon tried to drown the woman with a, with a flood of water that flowed from his mouth. But the earth helped her Woo! by opening its mouth and swallow, uh, swallowing the river that gushed out of the mouth of that dragon. And the next part. And the dragon was angry. He ain't, he's still not done this, the fourth attack. The dragon was angry at the woman and declared against the rest of her, her children, de declared war against the rest of her children, all who keep God's commandments and maintain their testimony for Jesus. Then the dragon took his stand on the shores behind the sea. You might as well go, brother. The bishop said, don't call him brother. He's not your brother. Call, you might as well go, joker. <laughs> Because no matter what you do to me and God's people, we always win. Come on, say hallelujah. When you think about always, it means at all times, on all occasions, every single time, forever and ever. It means forevermore. It means permanently, people of God. It means eternally perpetually and continually until hell freezes over. Come on, say hallelujah. That's how often you win. It never runs out. No matter if you have a job. You know the word, write it down, Psalm 68, 19. He daily loads me with benefits, even the God of Jacob, Selah. And I love the word Selah because it means to relax, Look up Selah. It means to reflect on what God has already done for you. Don't get spiritual amnesia and Alzheimer's. You know God divided the Red Sea in your life. Don't you let the devil make you turn your back on God because of the pandemic, because of what my baby went through. You win. Even with tears falling down your face, you need to say to the devil, I always win no matter what. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so always again, at all times, on all occasions, this is what God hooked you up with. Overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loves us. Always, always through the cross of Christ. He took the weapons and disarmed the evil rulers in Colossians 2. You have the hookup. Don't get distracted. At all occasions, at every single time, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, you win. Heaven and earth to pass away, but God's word stands forever. If he told you you win, you win even when the earth passes away. And it says per permanently, hallelujah, perpetually, eternally, continually until hell freezes over. And when I looked it up, that's exactly what it says, until hell, and hell is not going to freeze over. <laughs> so you will never lose. And then to win means to be successful and victorious, to gain and achieve, to triumph over all things. You have to decide to win. The word says in Job twenty two twenty eight. you write it down. You decree a thing, and it shall be established to you, and the light will shine on your ways. Decree a thing. That thing could be positive or negative. And when you decide that you win, it's done. If you look up the word decree, it means to decide. You win. I just looked at the clock. I'm turning this over to Pastor Nick. We're going to do this tomorrow and even go deeper. But the last part I'll say hallelujah, is that when you understand that you are an eagle, it didn't say, and the woman was given two wings of a hawk to go into the wilderness. It says that she was given two wings 
of an eagle. And you are eagles, not chickens. You were created with a purpose and conceived in God's love. Don't you know you're rare and unique and no other creature will ever compare to you? You're also men and women of God. Men and women of power, of prosperity, of divine purpose. So get off your face and do something. Don't cry about it. Be about it. Stop crying and start flying. Stop complaining and start aiming. And stop talking and start walking. This is the best day of your life. It may not be the way you want. If your wife not being uh, what she need to be to you, you start being the change you want to see. If your husband is not doing what you want, you become the change you want to see. Get the flowers. I told the women I have a triumphant women's prayer call. I forgot to announce it today. I wish I had because I'd love for those women to join us once a month. Hallelujah. I'll say it tomorrow. But I told the women on there, get your husband a dozen roses and don't tell him. You can go to Kroger's or Walmart. They got him about $10. But get him roses. Don't get the daisies and all other. Get roses. Okay? You don't have to have them sent from flower company. It's expensive. Go and find a dozen roses at Kroger's or whatever and get them. Or Publix, wherever you guys have here. And get a card. Don't tell him. Pick a card out. Write in the card. You're my snooky. I love you. You just, I'm so glad you asked me to be your wife. You're the best husband in the world. Even if he's not, speak those things that be not as though they, not are as though they were. Come on, say hallelujah. So if you want change, you got to become the change you want to see. And so I, the, we have to understand that we're eagles. We don't give up. We go up. And we never fold up. Hallelujah. So once you decide to win, and once you know that the Lord God takes you, the higher he takes you. You get on your face prostrate and say, listen, God, I can't do this. I, I need you to teach me how to be a better husband. I thought I knew I messed this thing totally up. Please help me. Get on your face and pray today. When your wife go to sleep, get in there by yourself with God. Get it together. If you're going to be married, be happy. Jesus told him marriage will not exist in heaven. You he tell me, I'm going to go see my husband again, baby. You, you listen. Uh -uh. No. <laughs> The Bible says marriage will not exist in heaven. So do right. Look at your neighbor and say, do it, do it right now. This is the best chance you have. So I say to you, we're going to finish, and you want to you wanna be here again tomorrow because I'm going to go into some of this, but the rest of what God gave me, that in your winning, you have to dis dismiss some disses. Disappointment, diss the diss and walk in your appointment. The discouragement, diss the diss and be encouraged. The diss in, 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 in disease, diss the diss and walk in ease. Because disease comes from disease. D -d disease, excuse me, comes from dis-ease. So diss the diss. The distractions, diss the, the diss. And take some action and do what you're supposed to do. That woman had to get out that house with her sons and go get those vessels. I need some money. Okay, yeah, get, get going, do what I said. Because it's a reward in obedience. So don't be distracted. Diss the diss. And walk in your actions. And you'll get the rest tomorrow. I say to you, you'll never lose. And you always win. No matter what. God bless you and keep us in your prayers. At the table out there, you can come and get some of the items. Bishop's book we have with us as well, King to King. Very powerful book. I was a part of a book, the National Prayer Book, with 52 ladies. We wrote prayers. It is an incredible book. Uh, I, you can order that, and I'll send it back to you. Uh, also, a plaque here you can get for your beautiful wife or your girls. It says, Rich Queen, uh, you were made to dream, made to believe, and made to achieve. Now soar like never before. That's $10. And we have a packet of a rich queen dream. Dream rich queens. And this packet uh, here is $29 with a beautiful pen, diamond pen, 
and your journals so you can write all your dreams in. God bless you and have a great evening. Don't give up on God. He won't give up on you. Amen. 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 <laughs> That's right. You better go give him a kiss. Aren't you glad you came to church tonight? Yeah. Pastor Karen, thank you for inviting Dr. Bolden to come for your conference. And thank you for sharing the word of the Lord with us. You know, it, it just, it, it hits home. You know, the, the enemy is trying to do everything he can to keep us down, to make us live in fear. The, this, this resurgence of the pandemic, all of that is to just to quench you and to keep you down and keep you under and to keep us in fear and isolated. And we've got to remember, that's not God's purpose and plan for us. And it is true. If you don't give up, you win. The only way the devil wins is when you give up. So don't give up. Don't give up. Be, be stubborn like a mule. Be like a pit bull and grab on and don't let go. Just believe and trust that that situation is going to turn around and change. Amen. So we've received the word of the Lord, and it is our privilege and blessing now to sow into those who have sown into us. And I want to encourage you tonight to... Uh, Bring an offering for, to the Lord for Dr. Bolden and Bishop. And uh, I want to ask you to prayerfully consider giving tonight. Uh, our ushers are going to be at the door, and they'll have a basket. And if you'd like to sow into their lives tonight, I want to encourage you to pray first and ask the Lord what he'd have you to do always, because everything you have belongs to him anyway, right? Some of you aren't so sure about that. You said, Pastor, I worked so hard for that. I worked hard for my mom. I understand you worked hard, but you couldn't work a day in your life if God didn't give you breath and didn't give you brains to produce well. So everything that we have belongs to the Lord. So just ask God what he wants you to do. So don't get mad at me. You know, so it's all about money. It's not about money. It's just obey the Lord, whatever God tells you to do. Maybe he'll tell you to do nothing. That surprised me, but maybe he will. Just obey the Lord. Don't, don't give a token offering. Ask the Lord what he wants you to do. I want to pray blessing over Bishop and, and, uh, and Dr. Rhonda and uh, just pray that God would continue to pour his spirit out and bless them. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you tonight for Bishop and for Dr. Rhonda and thank you, God, for what you have done in and through their lives. Thank you, Lord God, that you rescued bishop lord god and you you took him out lord god and you are bringing him in lord and it's going to be bigger and better and greater lord god uh, lord there's going to be more that you're going to do in him his latter days will be greater than his former days lord god and thank you lord for the restoration and the healing lord god and all that you're going to pour in and through him father and thank you for uh, dr Rhonda, and just bless her lord and pour your spirit out upon her father and thank you for the privilege, Lord God, of sowing into their lives. And I just pray, God, that you'd speak to all of our hearts and direct us, Lord, what you want us to do. Lord, just speak to us even now, Father. Just put something in our heart that you want us to do. Lord, we're listening. We're listening. Lord, give us the courage to obey whatever you speak to our hearts, Lord. Glorify your name in and through our giving tonight, Lord God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that in you, in you we always win, no matter what. Always win, Lord, no matter what. All for your glory, Lord, in Jesus' name. And God's people say, amen. amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Hey, listen, if you want prayer, uh, I'm going to ask my elders to come be available to you for prayer. I want to invite you to go back and look at the book table, and, uh, and I don't know, uh, Dr. Rondo, you can be back there. She's going to be back by the book table, so uh, you can be a blessing and take part of her homework.